So, next speaker, uh, we're, uh, it's a pleasure to have uh, uh, Mr. Michael Bohm, who leverages many years as a technology executive in promoting clean tech and helping clean tech companies, especially in the areas of electric drivetrain solutions and clean energy solutions for grid deployed vehicles. Educated at Northwestern University in the Stanford Graduate School of Business, he has assessed the aero environments, DWP, Toyota, and Truxa locally in entering the EV space. He serves on boards and committees relating to e-mobility for the LAEDC, LAEDC, CERC LA, and the German American Business Association and the LA Clean Tech Incubator. Please welcome Michael Bohm. Thank you very much, everyone. It's, uh, it's a pleasure and honor to be here. Uh, it's, I love the UCLA community, and I think uh, you can see from a couple of the examples that they're doing great things in the space. Yes, please. Um, what I want to talk about is how can we promote a LA cluster in Los Angeles? And there's one piece of it, which is how do we get people to purchase and drive the vehicles? And a lot of that is focused around the uh, consumer space. I think there's other spaces that are also interesting, and we can have a multiplicity of electric drivetrain solutions, and we can have the companies that build them here. So one piece of it is having the, uh, the policy and technology, and the university is great for that. Second piece is let's figure out how to make it commercial and how to get it out into the market. So one of the things that's happening um, in, in the area is that LA after Detroit has the most automotive design in the country. Uh, we've got 13 design centers, and the art center is a great source of automotive designing. One of the problems, though, is a lot of the design centers tend to do more aesthetic pieces of the design, the bodies and the styling, and less about the drivetrain and some of the core aspects of it. Um, but still, it, we have a lot of resources for doing that. Michigan right now has a lot of the subsidies for attracting EV facilities for production and also for batteries, although... If you watch the news, it hasn't been going so well for some of the battery companies. Um, but what we're great at, it's tough for people to put big, huge plants here like they put in Michigan. But we are absolutely great at doing small-scale production. And so what, what my suggestion is, is that there's an opportunity for Southern California to become a hub of this new wave of electric-powered vehicles. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that we would, uh, we would need to do to make that happen. Um, we have a lot of kit car and aftermarket companies here already that are building small volume of, of vehicles. Um, a lot of the retrofits that turn regular vehicles into electric vehicles, both for fleet and consumers, are based in our region. So we have a lot of the expertise. Um, one of the things about electric vehicles is that they're a lot less complicated than an internal combustion engine with all the drivetrain. There's a lot less parts. And as one example, one of the companies I work with, you can see on the left there, is Trexa. And they have only about 40 uh, parts that go into making that platform, as compared to hundreds, if not thousands, that would go into a similar chassis for an internal combustion engine-powered platform. So you have the potential to actually have a small number of parts that you can assemble quickly. Um, think of a uh, personal computer, right? You can kind of put them together with a screwdriver. You buy the hard drive and the RAM and this and that, and you can kind of put it together in an afternoon yourself. Electric vehicles aren't quite there yet, but they're much simpler. Um, so I think that you can, you can actually make a big case for having small-scale manufacturing and a lot more flexibility and variability in the products that come out of those small-scale manufacturing lines in Los Angeles. Some of the problems that companies face... Um, and I think Fisker's seen some of them in Tesla, which are the larger of the EV companies, is it takes a huge amount of capital to go in and play in the car market. It's very, very, very regulated. And, you know, for example, safety testing can easily be 10 to $20 million. And if you're a small guy making a couple thousand, it just isn't going to work. Um, the LEAF cost well over a billion dollars to design and get tooled up for production. And that's a huge barrier to entry. Um, so we, we're going to talk a little bit about what are the things that can be done to help jumpstart an EV cluster in Los Angeles and overcome some of these barriers to entry. Um, so safety and regulatory is a big one. There's a bill sponsored by Campbell, who's a U.S. representative out of uh, Southern California, to 
basically create a waiver against DOT safety testing for production runs of less than 2,000 vehicles. And if, if any of you are wondering why the Tesla Roadster is no longer for sale, it's because they ship 1,997, and once they go over 2,000, they go over their waiver against the saving testing, the, the safety testing which they got. So this is an example of even a, a fairly well-funded company has a real challenge in being able to jump that hurdle of the, uh, the DOT testing. Um, battery management in life, this is something that uh, right now there's probably three or four companies that dominate almost all of the OEM supply of lithium ion batteries. But there's a huge number of people, in, in, especially in Asia, who are just dying to produce lots of cheap batteries. Um, the quality has to come up and the battery management has to uh, be improved to make that effective. But that's probably going to happen over the next couple of years. So I'm one of the optimists who thinks that the battery price is going to come down and energy, energy density is going to go up. Roadworthiness. Um, Again, a, a challenge you don't want to put on safe or, or poor experience cars on the market, but we do have a lot of uh, people who support hot rodding and racing and stuff here, and people really do understand how to build cars that can go fast and are fun to drive in Southern California. Passenger safety, um, I think you can address this easily. Airbags and, and uh, things like this are available fairly easily through automotive supply chains if you can get access to that supply chain. So if you're making an EV, you'd want to go and buy a airbag from the guy who's supplying it to Toyota for Camrys. Um, I'll kind of go through it a little bit quicker. Um, these are all things that are standard parts of the uh, EV supply chain. And these you don't really need to change much for EVs. These are things that you, if, if the companies here had access to the supply chain of large OEMs, they could go in and they could find these things at cost, cost attractive rates. So the big things that are changing, battery and management, Charging equipment is a big piece. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the public infrastructure, but also how do you have that handoff between the vehicle and the, uh, and the grid. Uh, regen is something that's new, and right now it's fairly tightly controlled IP, but I think it's going to get a lot more widespread soon. Lightweighting is really important. The ability to have lightweight materials, both for vehicle, chassis, body, and so on. Um, Fisker uses aluminum, I believe, is that right? Yep. Um, but other people are looking at exotic things like carbon fiber on the new BMW, for example, and even composite materials. And so these things are going to make it possible for folks to make a better proposition in terms of the weight profile, therefore reduce battery, therefore reduce cost for EV. And I think that will help adoption a lot. Custom applications. I love convertibles, and it's tough for me to w sit around and wait for people to sell two models of EVs before they come out with a convertible. So uh, I think the flexibility of small companies would let you build to order. Um, and that's a great thing for having the public adopt it quicker. Um, this example I have up here on the screen is uh, an example of lightweighting materials from a, a startup locally called Velozzi. And you can see on the top all of the different parts that go into making a classic steel chassis and frame. You can actually make it in one piece out of composite, which is the picture on the, on the bottom. And uh, you, can, you can save probably 70% uh, of the weight of the vehicle, and you can do it at the same price. So there's things that are coming out. It's just that the automotive industry is kind of slow to move and has a not invented here mentality. So if we're going to make this happen, if we're going to create uh, a cluster in this wide variety of vehicles and product types in the area, what do we need? Well, we've already got the aftermarket and the kit car people, and they actually sell thousands and tens of thousands of units from Southern California to the rest of the country already. Battery suppliers, a lot of this is coming from Asia, and I don't know if you know, but 80% of the, uh, the imports from China go through Port of LA and Port of Los Angeles, so we're in a great place logistically to bring in those. Uh, we have local motor suppliers, design and integration. Again, we have a lot of automotive designers, although a little bit less around the drivetrain. EVSE, um, Northern California has two. Uh, Kulo Mini Catality, we have uh, AeroVironment locally here, so we have a lot of support from those folks. Utilities, um, between the public utilities and DWP, we've got utilities that are, if not totally progressive, they're probably leading the pack in terms of opening their minds and their rates and the way that they communicate about EV adoption. So we could count that as supportive, but not a done deal. And OEM supply chain. 
uh, this is one of the pieces. We've got a lot of car companies here, especially Asian car companies, but the question is how can you open that supply chain for the standard parts to help uh, make this be an easy entry for law local and small production? So who needs to work in it? Custom integrators. Um, I think one of the things that is not often uh, looked at so thoroughly is specialty sales. So military, fleet sales, delivery trucks, electric buses, um, specialty equipment, agriculture. There's a whole range of areas where there's a lot of diesel or gasoline powered and some natural gas now just starting to happen. Um, transportation alternatives. But they haven't yet been electrified. And these are kind of low-hanging fruit. It's not quite as sexy as a consumer sports car, which we'll hear about next, but there's a lot of nitty-gritty getting carbon off the roads and getting people to start using electric vehicles in a controlled environment. And so I think that the support of fleet sales, the aggregation of demand, and the ability to penetrate both commercial and government markets for these specially purposed vehicles, and the ability to associate specially purposed vehicles not as a retrofit, but from a ground-up design as an electric vehicle is really important. Um, let's talk about a couple of the local players. Uh, Coda, they do leverage Chinese batteries. They have a JV in China for their lithium-ion batteries. And they're, they're in full-scale launch. Uh, BYD, again, leveraging China batteries. Uh, they are slow in the rollout. They were thinking about maybe this year, but it looks like it'll be next year, except for doing their fleet work in electric buses. Um, Fisker, we'll hear more about them, but they've had challenges with uh, A123 and some production delays, which just goes into this, reiterates what I'm saying. It's tough for somebody to break into an established industry like the automotive industry. Um, and again, a number of companies have been uh, contingent on government finance, which is always a delicate thing to do. So, but as you can see from all the pictures there, they got the coolest car. So, um, these are some of the local players who are already working it here, and I think we can get a lot more. This is kind of an eye chart, but this kind of shows what the process I think would look like um, if we want to build this cluster here. First, you need to inc incubate the companies, and so there's a whole range of things. The LA Cleantech Incubator actually has maybe a half dozen EV-related companies there, so it's a great place to look at as a model for how we can do that, but I think we can do more. Second one is develop, and you need to have enough companies that are in the supply chain, design, deployment, charging, all this, that they can work together and create our own model for EVs, because I think, face it, LA is probably one of the most advanced places for EV deployment in the world, and we have the chance to be an advanced place for EV production also. If we put those together, we can create the new models for how transportation will be electrified. Um, and that involves policy, that involves technology, and that involves the startups and the, uh, the OEMs, the people making the vehicles, all to work together and find a new model for how it's going to emerge. And we could essentially represent what the rest of the world looks like in 10 years. So these are some of the things we're doing. Uh, I work on an e-mobility task force, which promotes uh, policy and awareness, and we steal a lot of our points straight from JR, so thanks very much for, to the Luskin Institute for that. Um, we also work on uh, local government in encouraging fleet sales. County of LA now has a system where every, all the Southern California governments can sign up, and if you get your vehicle on a list, then you get volume rates, and everybody in Southern California can buy at that volume rate. So it encourages a standardization of purchasing, and it makes it easier than for a startup company to go out and sell one bus to each district or one dump truck to each district and so on. They can go once to the county and have a clearinghouse. And so that leverages our economic power and it makes it simpler for companies to get into this non-consumer vehicle market, which I think is an important way to jumpstart it. And uh, if you look down below, the LA Clean Tech. Oh, one of the other things we do for the e-mobility task force is we do an e-car fest where we go out to communities in the region and we do the communication. One of the things we've heard is that education is a really critical component of having people understand what is an EV, what does it mean to own one, and how do you fit into the grid. And so we bring utilities, EVSEs, and OEMs, and other companies together, and we take them out to the communities and have community awareness uh, roadshows. And we actually do that for, for, as a nonprofit. Uh, finally, the incubator has batteries, uh, 
350 Green is a third party uh, public charging business model, which may be threatened by all the subsidies, as we've heard. Uh, DB is a Chinese company that does battery swapping for public buses, which is successful in China. And grid test helps with the efficiency of uh, and reducing the cost and increasing the reliability of local charging, whether it's public or private. So what do we need? We kind of need to have some voice. We need an industry association to help speak out for all the things it takes to make this community happen. Um, a website so that people can be connected is important. People are, we have a lot going on, but they're not really very connected. LA is a big sprawl. Um, common design tools. One of the things we've looked at is talking with Autodesk where you could have uh, design models for all the different parts so that you could just go, if you're designing a car, you could just go up there and pull the Autodesk parts and plop them into your design. And that would ensure that you could first model it. And second, anybody who wants to participate in the economy would upload a CAD version of their thing. And so it helps people to get design wins. It's often a big challenge for uh, people selling into large OEMs. Uh, letting alone this, the, the safety stuff, production is a big hiccup for many companies trying to do this. And so having at least prototyping and pilot run facilities that lets people share equipment, land, regulatory, all that stuff is a way to help jumpstart smaller volume companies and people who want to get into the market and make it open. Um, and finally, uh, education we've talked about, and we have demand stimulation, which is how to make people aware of the options and the attractiveness of driving an EV. And finally, a trained workforce. And we're working together with local community colleges and universities to try to have people be available to support this kind of an industry cluster, both from the point of view of assembly, testing, design, engineering, and the business acumen to make it work. So. It's a, it's a fair ways away, but it's a possibility, and I think it's an attractive way to one-hit non-consumer vehicle market in Southern California, two, to develop an emerging economic model for how EVs work beyond the dealer and, and going back into the supply chain and the companies that make it happen, and three, a way to get the people with the charging infrastructure, the utilities, and the vehicles all on the same page and have LA be the example for the rest of the world, we hope, in how this can happen. Thank you very much for your, uh, your patience and your, and your, uh, your listening.